Hey folks, Ashley here, allthingsentry.com. This is going to be uh, several posts about a Ramus graft. Um, this young man had some sort of trauma. Tooth number seven or one two was extracted about four weeks ago, so you're going to see me degranulating that socket, preserving it with some BioWAS. We're going to be doing a Ramus graft here. And this video is going to be showing you just sort of the incisions, the primary ones. Um, so what I'm doing here is I'm doing a vertical releasing incision all the way to bone through periosteum. And we take it beyond the mecal genital junction. That's on the distal buckle of the uh, central incisor. We're going across the osseous ridge here, osseous crest. And then distal buckle of the uh, canine. I was talking with the old surgeon that uh, I first assisted on a ramus graft. And uh, there's a little technique and I posted a video about it, about making sure you can get that flap uh, all the way over that bone graft. And it's going to be those little, two little, I'm not sure what they call it, um, little mesial nicks of the flap at the apical base, and also the periosteal release incision. Those two things are critical to be able to get that all that mucosa over the bone graft and primary closure with the pedal tissue. So here I'm using a Woodson, pretty straightforward. Uh, I think the key, if you have no lot of flaps, is the, your initial incisions. If you're going to bone, go to bone. Don't fool around. Hit the bone. If you need to change your, rechange your blade, rechange your blade. Have a few out. So as I'm reflecting the tissue, you can see the extraction socket. It's a really good. I, I wish I took more photos. This would be a really good opportunity for uh, you, for newbies, to see uh, how an extraction socket heals. I guess about four weeks out, that tooth was extracted because, um, and I keep forgetting to email myself the, uh, the radiograph, it had a horizontal root fracture, and that's a great posting to show that on the radiograph had this weird bilateral radiolucency near the osseous crest. And then it was just like, boom, that's a horizontal root fracture. And sure enough, my buddy took it out and didn't take photos, Rico. So I'm just pushing... Um, just clean up the site, pushing the periosteum away. And right now I'm going to be de uh, granulating the socket. Again, we're going to be placing some xenograph bovine. If you don't know what bovine is, it, uh, we typically get milk from those animals. And we're going to be cleaning it up and then placing that um, xenograph into that socket. So one of the critical, one of the main instruments that you'd be using uh, is a Woodson and a periosteal elevator. Uh, those are classics. The Woodson's a really nice instrument. You can be fairly delicate. Be careful with your um, soft tissue. The less trauma, the faster it heals. So here you're going to be seeing the periosteal releasing incision. Uh, I have done one on a model, so you can see. And what we're doing is aiming the blade the pointy end of the blade towards the bone so you don't perforate the uh, your flap and what I'm doing here is essentially I'm just cutting away the periosteum so I'm leaving at the apical portion of the flap I'm leaving the periosteum attached to bone and I'm, set, I'm making incisions so what I can do is take this whole flap and stretch it right over so I can almost just imagine me trying to stretch that flap to his tonsils that way I'm going to get primary closure because the best way I can describe it, if you put a whole bunch of stuff under a carpet and then try to hide it, like say a couple books, and try to stretch the carpet over, it's not going to happen unless something gives. So that's in this case. And what we're doing here is I'm just checking just to make sure I get enough uh, movement of that flap. 